Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's an image of Old Faithful taken from the static cam from yesterday. There has been over a hundred earthquakes in the last week. I was busy yesterday posting all the earthquakes on my Google Maps. And what I noticed is that the majority of the earthquakes, which have been near a Yellowstone Lake, have been uh, located in the upper portion of the magma chamber. So here on USGS, we have two locations of earthquake swarms. This one here at Yellowstone Lake. And I've talked about the crack that runs through the lake um, where there is a fault line that's allowing magma to rise up. It hasn't broken through yet, but scientists believe it is rhyolite. Rhyolite is one of the most explosive, in fact, is the most explosive type of lavas, and it's called magma when it's still under the ground. Notice we're at 2.8 kilometers in depth, 2.1 kilometers in depth. Another 2.1, 2.2, 2.7, 2.7, etc. This would be about 1.3 um, miles below sea level, and all earthquakes are measured from sea level. The uh, ground above is getting very brittle. The magma chamber, the roof, the dome of the magma chamber is about three miles under the ground. So these earthquakes are actually all above the upper magma chamber. And they're small, but it's just another indication of how brittle the ground is getting. There was some other ones. Um some large earthquakes, the magnitude 2s and greater have been increasing. It used to be that they never had magnitude 2 earthquakes. And um, Hank Hessler, I believe it was, the geologist that worked there at Yellowstone, uh, made a comment about, what, three, four years ago, that if they started having magnitude 2 earthquakes, um, uh, yeah, there's one right there, 2.4. Um, yeah, they would be very concerned. So in this location, there's a 2.4, a 2.6, and a 2.1. All, oh, there's another 2.4. Um, this has all been within um, the last day. I wanted to show you the spectrogram of what's going on. Here we have Moose Creek, Idaho, uh, Maple Creek, and Mary Lake. Um, this is one of the earthquakes that they actually did not report. Um, when they're marked in red, you can see multiple ones marked in red. It's uh, a signature that shows that the um, computers picked up the earthquake and would send a message to the geologist to check it out. Here's another one that occurred just after midnight universal time. Uh, 31 minutes it shows here, 30 minutes here, and another one there. And we'll come down to this other one. That's fairly large. And there's a red one above it. And we'll look at that. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to this one here at the beginning of it. Yeah, there's lots of things going on there at Yellowstone. And this has been going on. And those of you that have been following me, know that the activity there at Yellowstone has increased. Here we got another one. Okay, this is for today. Now, as you know, we're going to probably have uh, Northern Lights Aurora. Uh, there was a magnitude um, C7 solar flare a few days ago, and it's going to be impacting our planet, and that will probably cause an increase in earthquakes. And they're also saying that tonight um, you have a good possibility of seeing the northern lights here in the upper portions of the United States. Today being Thursday, November 10th. Yeah, that's a lot of earthquakes and they're very shallow. I'm going to pull this out and we'll go to this other location of the other earthquake swarm. This one here I noticed, and this is very significant. There was a small earthquake, a magnitude 1.0, but it was at a depth of minus 2.2 kilometers, meaning it was above 
sea level. That earthquake was on the 7th, but being very significant, it means magma is rising, pushing up on that brittle crust of the earth, and we got to keep an eye out for more minuses um, in earthquakes. So this earthquake would have been 1.37 miles above sea level. So in this location here, there was 36 earthquakes between the uh, 7th and the 8th. 2.1 kilometers in depth, 5.2 kilometers in depth, 4 kilometers in depth, 4.8 kilometers in depth. That was a 1.5, another 1.5, 4.6 kilometers in depth. So that would be 2.8 miles in depth, which still shows it is above the upper dome of the magma chamber. Um, right there is the uh, 1.0, which had a minus in depth. And what you do not want to happen is that dome to become so brittle and collapse and then end, end up having a major um, eruption. I've told you in the past how, uh, let me show you, up over here, here's Yellowstone Lake, we got the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. This is the area where um, last year, I believe it was, where the trees fell and burned up from the ground up, turned to charcoal. But this is the area where the ground is very thin. Um, Robert Smith, Bob Smith, feels that the next eruption will have. When Yellowstone had its last major eruption, it did a counterclockwise unzipping of the caldera, starting up by uh, the Madison River area, and working its way down to a heart lake then both resurgent domes collapsed and currently uh, these earthquakes are in between the uh, two resurgent domes that that swarm right there as you know right now um, there's not visitors or very many visitors to the park um, the buildings are closed the hotels are closed the restaurants are closed so basically, there wouldn't be any people there to report feeling an earthquake. There was a magnitude 2.6 on the 8th, and one person reported feeling that earthquake. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that earthquake. And let's bring it out and see if we can possibly find where that person was at. Here we got Maple Creek. And probably over here. There's some homes over in this direction. See that? So someone is living there, um, maybe working at the park. Uh, maybe um, they live there all year round. I don't know, but they did report feeling the earthquake. This earthquake is not far from that 3.1 that they had in uh, November on the 25th. One person reported feeling that earthquake possibly the same person and on the felt reports you can see here yeah we got the same little area of um, infrastructure here we have the tilt meter for the last seven days for Norris Junction lots of dots as you know means lots of shaking X is north Y is east for the last seven days each dot would be an earthquake in the last seven days and then we'll come down to the last 30 days. Grant, which is at the what south um, west edge of Yellowstone Lake. This is a borehole. Top is north. Bottom is east. Look how the ground's been shaking. Last seven days. And each dot would be an earthquake for the last seven days. Yeah, another indication of a lot of earthquakes that they're not reporting. And then the last 30 days. And I've talked about how they're measuring the uh, flow of the magma under the ground. Um, if you look at the horizon, um, it would be rising kind of northwest. But the flow of the magma under the ground is moving east. That dome of rhyolite, which is holding in all the gases, and of course the magma, um, has prevented the magma from coming up and 
It's been running horizontally throughout the system for several years now. Think of it being squeezed. The tilt meter for Yellowstone Lake for the last seven days. Top is north, bottom is east. You can see we got uplift in the east. Yep. And there's so many earthquakes in the last seven days. It's just one blob. And then the last 30 days. See how we got uplift in the east? The magma flowing in the east. And then Madison River. This is, again, a borehole, a very deep well under the ground. All the shaking for the last three days. Look at that. And all the earthquakes for the last week. And then the last 30 days. Look at that. Here we have another borehole. They do have two different boreholes at Norris Junction. Top is north, last seven days. Bottom is east. All right, and we have just basic uplift straight in the middle. But actually, it looks like it's being kind of squeezed a little bit. Remember, Y is east. But if you looked at the horizon, it would look like it was rising up more so in the south. I wanted to show you the current planetary index um, for the impact of that solar flare, that C7 solar, solar flare. Um, it was up, and it goes by, what, every couple hours here, every three hours. And it's gone down again. It'll probably rise up because they're seeing tonight, Thursday, we might be able to see the auroras as this um, um, solar stream impacts our Earth. So that's all I have for you right now. Any thoughts or comments or questions, uh, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.